together time and split time, two halves of the same coin and one of those first big challenges that beginners face in learning to spin poi. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today we're diving into ways that you can get down both together time and split time as you're on your flow journey. Before we dive in, I just wanna do a quick shout out for the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And a special thanks to the first non-business friend of the channel, Johnny Howard. Thanks so much for your support, Johnny. So, together time, split time, what on earth am I talking about here? When we refer to timings in poi spinning, and really flow arts in general, we're referring to the phasing of the props as they spin around a central point of control. And while there are technically an infinite number of timings we could play with, we tend to only focus on just two. Timings with the poi phased together, and timings with the poi phased apart. Whether the poi are spinning in the same direction or opposite directions, we say that they are spinning in together time if they're together at the top and the bottom of their paths. And by the same token, whether the poi are spinning in the same or opposite directions, we say that they are spinning in split time if they're apart at the top and bottom of their paths. To get the full picture, check out my video explaining timing and direction. I'll link to it down in the description. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to talk about the differences between timings. So stop me if this one sounds familiar, but early on in my flow journey, I had a lot of trouble keeping a consistent split timing. Whether it was performing weaves, or eventually when I got to flowers too, I had this bad habit of falling back into together time both because it was comfortable and because it takes more training to get split time muscle memory down. So I'm going to take you through a couple exercises that will help you get more proficient at each. And to understand what we're trying to achieve here, I want to show you why together time makes so much more intuitive sense than split time does. Here I have my poi in together time same direction, and I want you all to zero in on what my hands are doing. You see how they're moving up and down in tandem together? This means that whatever one hand is doing, the other hand simply has to copy. This is true whether the hands are close to each other, far apart, or stacked on top of one another. But if I switch over to split time same direction, now my hands are always performing opposite actions at the same time. One goes up while the other goes down. Again, this is true whether my hands are nearby, far apart, or stacked on top of each other. So really what we have to achieve here is conscious control over our hands performing an action in unison or in opposition to each other. And I have an interesting way to train this. So my background before I came into the flow arts was in music, and specifically I learned at one point basic proficiency at drums. And that's a skill that comes in real handy here. So this is going to seem as though I'm taking us on a very strange tangent, but stick with me here. I want you to get a hold of a metronome. There are lots of free apps out there for your phone that will work, but I want you to set it to common time at 120 beats per minute or 2 beats per second in 4-4 and perform two exercises with me. I want you to first notice the down and up beats of the metronome. If you count them in groups of four, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, then the 1 and the 3 are the down beats, while the 2 and the 4 are the up beats. Have a seat and set that metronome going. I want you to bring your hands down together to touch your thighs on the down beats at one and three, and I want them to go back up on the two and the four. Together they're gonna go down one, up two, down three, up four. Repeat this until you can get the timing solid for at least 20 down beats. Now we're going to apply this to the poi. Get your poi spinning in together time same direction in wall plane, and now shoot to have the poi touch down on the one and the three, and up on the two and the four. Down one, up two, down three, up four. Do this with the hands roughly together just to get a feel for this, because we're going to move the hands to different positions around the body. Do this for 20 reps with your hands close, with your hands apart, and with your hands stacked on top of each other. 
Doing this with the hand stacked can especially be tricky. Really remember that those upbeats are as important as the downbeats. When I'm performing tricks in Together Same, I'm actually almost always focused on the upbeats rather than the downbeats because I find if I can get the up part right, the down part kind of takes care of itself. Now let's do the same exercise in Together Opposites. If you remember our butterflies from last week, they actually double as a drill for performing Together Time Opposites. Again, perform them in time with the metronome. Down one, up two, down three, up four, with the hands together. Again, with the hands apart, and finally with the hands stacked on top of each other. Remember again here to focus on the up and the down beats. Again, try to see if you can keep the timing consistent in all three positions for no fewer than 20 down beats. And now let's talk about split time. First, we're going to have to go back to the metronome. This time, rather than having our hands performing the down and up beats in unison, I'm going to assign them to alternate. My right hand will come down on the 1 and the 3, and my left hand will come down on the 2 and the 4. This is what that looks like in action. Just like performing a drum fill, I'm going to alternate right 1, left 2, right 3, left 4 as I play along with the metronome. This is going to take some time and some training to get into muscle memory. Again, remember to work at this until you can consistently get 20 downbeats. And because I know that there's an additional challenge coming, I'm going to add a variation on this drill too. I want you to stack both hands above the same thigh, say both on the left. Now, as the right hand comes down, it will come together with the left hand as it is coming up, and the two will come apart as the left hand goes back down. So think, together one, apart two, together three, apart four, together, apart, together, apart. This is going to be super important. And now let's try this out with the poi. I want you to do this in split time, same direction to start with and set the metronome going. Again, think, right one, left two, right three, left four. Make sure that each hand has its own distinct beat. And just like in the together time exercise, I think it helps to think of the upbeats as much as the downbeats. The left has to hit up as the right is hitting down. So now let's move our hands around just a bit. Starting with hands apart, again, think. Right, left, right, left. In some ways, this almost feels like a seesaw to me in that as one side is coming up, the other side is going down. Now try this with two hands stacked on top of each other. I usually prefer with my right hand on top. This one feels a little unique, and this is part of the reason why I suggested training with together and apart counts. Think that the poi come together, apart, together, apart. Try to hold this timing consistently for 20 beats in each spot. So now, how about we try this same thing in split time opposites? Performing this with hands together will just entail we once again count right, left, right, left, as our poi each perform down beats. It gets a little bit more interesting and takes a little bit more focus when we spread our arms out and once again think right, left, right, left. Remember to make those upbeats count as much as the downbeats. So what about the hands stacked on top of each other? So I'm going to be real with you. With this timing and direction mode, if you're off by even a little bit, it's kind of painfully clear to the audience. So the thing to focus on here is really making sure those poi come together in the middle. Really focus on that point of contact between the poi as your hands move together, apart, together, apart in time with the metronome. If one poi is a little early or late, it throws off the appearance of this mode completely. So drill this one extra hard. Now, there's a variety of other ways to drill timing out there, and many people will swear by doing so with mirrors. I'm hoping that this is a technique that will work for anyone who has access to my videos, regardless of what other resources they may have at their disposal. And ultimately, it was a combination of thinking of upbeats and downbeats, as well as seesaws, and together, and apart positions that help me really reach proficiency with these different timings. This is the thing you'll be working on for as long as you spend poi, so make sure to come back to these exercises every so often in the future, yeah? Want to learn the basics of poi spinning? I've got you covered. I offer a 13-part introductory poi course on my learning site at learn.drexfactor.com. I'll teach you the basics of timing and direction, as well as a host of other beginner level tricks like the three beat weave, butterfly, stalls, and more. Use the promo code TIMING at checkout to get 20% off of 
this course. Got anything out of this video? Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to help other people find it and to help my channel grow. And I also just wanted to put out a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these wonderful folks right here. These are my Flow patrons on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. If you'd like to help me out in my mission to bring poise spinning and the flow arts to the wider world and help people learn to be creative with their brains and their bodies, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content, a say in what topics I tackle in the future, plus some great extras and behind the scenes content as well. So go check that out. Please and thank you. What aspects of poi spinning are you struggling with? Let me know down in the comments and I might make a video helping to break those concepts or tricks down for you. You can check out some of my other videos on poi frameworks and concepts at the playlist down in the description or up here on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Be sure to get outside and flow today and I will see you with a new video on Friday. Peace.